Hello, everyone. Welcome to Appreciate Dunhua Online. My name is Li Yaping. I'm from Dunhua Academy. Today is the Lantern Festival. I wish all of you happy Lantern Festival and good health. I hope everything goes well for you. Today, I will show you a typical cave built in the 6th century AD. In Chinese history, that was the Western Wei Dynasty. This cave has a long history, about 1,500 years. The colors of the paintings are still fresh today. Its contents are very rich. Now, let's get into this cave and appreciate it. This cave has a truncated pyramid ceiling. The four slopes of the ceiling have painted various images, including Indian deities and traditional Chinese celestial beings. First, let's focus on the paintings of the west slope. In the center of the mural is Asura, who is a famous Dharma garden in Buddhism. He has four eyes and four arms, standing in the blue ocean, but the water can't reach his knees. His upper two hands holding the sun and the moon. Maybe you are curious about why Asura holds the sun and the moon. According to scholars' studies, Asura once wanted to see the beautiful celestial women in heaven, but the sun and the moonlight are too strong so he covered them with hands. Behind him is Mountain Sumeru, which is a towering mountain in the center of the world, with abundant fragrant woods growing on it. On both sides of Asura are four nature gods who originated from old Chinese mythology mentioned in the book Classics of Mountains and Seas, dating back to 2,000 years ago. This is Wind God. He has a tiger head and a human body, bird claws, and a pair of wings on the back, carrying a wind bag. This is a Rain God. He spurs claws and mist from his mouth who is in charge of the rain. This is Thunder God. He hits a circle of drums to make thunder sounds. Here we can see the Lightning God. He is holding an iron anvil to make lightning. Now let's turn around to look at the paintings of the East Slope. There is a Sintamani guarded by a pair of warriors. It is a symbol of the purity and the light. It is said that Sintamani has a miraculous power of avoiding mishap and purifying dirty water. Others say that the Sintamani is a kind of wish-granting orb, which can make people's wishes come true. On the left side, this figure is Zhu Chu, which is one of the four divine creatures in Chinese mythology and the guardian deity of the South Direction. It looks like a phoenix. This is Xuan Wu, who is in charge of the North Direction. Its appearance looks like a combination of snake and a tortoise. Here we can see an exciting acrobat figure. He is doing handstand with deep eye sockets and a high nose, suggesting that he might come from the western regions. Painters wanted to depict the virus deities in heaven and the secular life on earth. On the south slope, we can see there is a beautiful lady sitting in a phoenix chariot traveling to heaven. She wears a white sleeved robe, who is the goddess of divine realm, queen mother of the West. According to the classics of mountains and seas, 
Queen Mother of the West was in human form, but had a leopard tail and tiger teeth. She was worshipped by more and more people in the Han Dynasty, so her facial features changed. In front of the chariot, this figure is Wu Huo, a deity from Chinese mythology who has a pair of horns on his head and a pair of wings on the back. On the left corner, we find an attractive figure which has 11 human heads and a tiger body. It is called Kai Ming, who guards the peace of Kunlun Mountains. The lower part of the mural depicted mountains and the wild animals which symbolizing the earth. Now, let's appreciate the paintings of the North Slope. In the center of the mural is the scene of King Father of the East ascending to heaven. He is sitting in the dragon chariot. It's a pity that a piece of painting had lost. Only the chariot remains. Those immortals ride on dragons and hold banners to welcome the King Father of the East. This figure is a feather man. His appearance is similar to Apsaras, but his ears protruding from his neck and has a pair of feather wings on the back. His job is to guide dead souls to heaven. The lower part of the mural shows the hunting scenes. There is a hunter riding on a horse. He swerves his upper body and pulls the bowstring to shoot at the tiger. The painter has managed to capture the most exciting moment of the hunt. This kind of hunting scene was influenced by Persian art, which originated from Persia. During the cultural exchange between the East and the West, it was introduced to Dunhuang paintings. A wild ox is turning around to glance at its pursuer. His posture and expression of the ox have been captured with great precision. This is a wonderful piece of animal line drawing. There is another hunter pursuing deers. The deer's forelegs are slender and delicate, but their hind legs look very strong, indicating that deers are fast runners. These vivid images of animals and hunting scenes are the finest examples of wildlife paintings at Dunhuang. Except for ceiling paintings, there are four flying apsaras in the Buddha's preaching scene on the north wall. The upper two apsaras are slim and slender, wearing long robes with sashes, are flying ethereally in the sky, which was influenced by the Central Plains culture. The lower two apsaras bear their upper bodies, their feet rising higher than their heads, which is an Indian style. Different styles of apsaras appear in some painting, embodying the cultural exchange between China and foreign countries. These various deities from Buddhism and traditional Chinese mythology coexist in one cave, reflecting the synthesization of Buddhism and Buddhist art. If Buddhism wants to take roots and develop in China, it needs to absorb the local culture elements and accept the influence of traditional Chinese thoughts which is why there are so many deity images from both cultures in this cave. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time.